feliz Navidad, próspero año y felicidad. Hello everyone, happy holidays. It is the seventh episode of the 10 days of Tiny Disc. Welcome to a very wintry December 27th. And today we are going to be giving a game the glassy-eyed, unblinking, not award. I'm Robert and I'm joined here by Jack and Colin. I wrote. So, so the meaning of this award is, you know, have you ever been playing a game and then you do something or something really, really cool happens in the game that your jaw just drops? Like, you just sit there and think, like, wow, that was so freaking cool. Like, I can't believe something like this is in a game. Wow, this is amazing. This is truly one of my favorite moments ever in this year. What is the coolest slash best moment in gaming for 2017? The Tiny is going to get awarded. Hardware is getting handed out. Uh, Legends will be made. And we're going to begin now. Yes, this is something they could put on their resumes, and it will forever change their lives. So, <laughs> let us start off with our nominees here. Tech In Tekken 7, there is that slow-mo moment, usually right when the health bars are low. That's our so nominee. Surf. <laughs> That's our nominee number one. Number two, the chicken dinner in Player Known's Battlegrounds. Number three, anytime Zelda The Breath of the Wild made you stop and say... Wait, you can do that? Number four, just the entire ending sequence of Super Mario Odyssey. And number five, the level where you explore Mesquite, Texas in Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Okay, so what I just realized is that there's going to be spoilers here. Obviously, we're talking about the best moments in gaming this year. So just blanket spoiler warning for all of these games. We're going to be talking about awesome stuff that happens uh i myself i just realized i'm gonna have to sit out when you guys talk about mario so maybe we should talk about that one last and uh you'll just have to flag me down or something because <laughs> i don't want the end of mario spoiled for me yikes that's gonna make this one hard Ooh, to deliberate boy. then won't it we'll see <laughs> but i don't want it spoiled okay we'll figure it out okay well let's at least talk about why each of these moments are nominated and let's start off with the Tekken 7 slow-mo. So I'm the one that put this one up for nomination. And I was like, this needs to be in here because there's something. Ah, that might have been me, but go ahead. No, I'll give you credit. I, it's fine. I, I definitely <laughs> put it up. You bought Tekken 7 okay. months after I did. Fuck uh, off. You played it first, but I, okay. Are you kidding? Me? I'm the no i'm i'm done i'm so done it's fine it's fine you got it it's, run with it run we with it. are cool. going to go through the revision history of this google doc and i'll prove it to you <laughs> <laughs> but yes so the tekken 7 slow-mo moment Royale. it happens when you in the like it, tekken 7 is a fighting game if you don't know and when you are about to hit someone else and they're about to hit you and your inputs are very close together and your you know punches are about to hit each other almost at the same time do the do game sh- goes Dude. slow motion zooms in does a different cool dynamic camera angle until the hit connects and one of you guys is going to get hit for the most part and the other one's going to get off scot-free and usually that's like the end of the match and it's the ultimate rock paper scissor yeah and it's because like at that point it's it doesn't break the game because you can't input anything after like during that slow motion because your animations are happening the frames are in motion it's all over at that point and there's just something about how it's made that final moment that happens kind of often in fighting games, especially if you're playing it with your friends and to make it like so cool and such a thing to like cheer for at the end and be like, oh, who's going to get Whoa, whoa, that's so great. Like it's a moment that can just be recreated every fight and, and it's so dynamic in every way. And it's really it's one a, of my favorites. It's a very heart pounding moment. It's very suspenseful. And every time it happens to me in the game, I take a deep breath like, shit, what is going to happen? Because it's it's not always predictable, you know, and I would imagine so, there's got to be like just by chance alone, there's got to be parts where you, the hits happen at the same time and it's like a double KO or some shit. I mean, I'm sure that's rare, but just the possibility of anything happening is really one of the highlights of that game. And that game has a lot of highlights to it, but the slow-mo is just very well implemented and I would like to see it um, duplicated in other games. Yeah, I need to buy this game. You should. It's one of my favorite fighting games this year. Honestly, is, is there gonna be another Steam sale like for the for like Christmas time, like be, now time? I guess I'd be willing to bet, and I think uh, you should pick it up if you haven't yet. Yeah. 
our next nominee, the chicken dinner in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Okay, so this is the absolute greatest endorphin rush to the brain that you can experience outside of recreational uh, drugs. Oh, good. <laughs> this year, yeah. I wouldn't know because I don't do them, but I've seen some documentaries. Anyways, uh, the chicken dinner is what you are all struggling towards. Very few people have tasted this chicken that I hear is at the end. But Robert, as we've said and documented, the very first time he boots up PUBG, him and I go into duo mode, and I do end up dying. I'm like in the I'm like we make top five, I die, and then Robert ends up like winning. But I think like people were killing themselves or something like that. Like I remember you were just laying there, and then all of a sudden we won. Yeah, and it's like oh okay, well that's the game, Robert. Like congratulations, you can just like uninstall it now. Yeah, but it happened, and like very few people can can say that. And still, myself, I haven't gotten chicken dinner like on a solo mode yet. Granted, I haven't tried very hard, but it'd be nice to say I did it at least once in my life. Uh, so I would say that in the game that has already been awarded the the biggest surprise of this game, this is the highlight, and this is the moment that you screenshot, that you share on social media, that you tell all your friends about. You don't keep this to yourself when you get the chicken dinner. You're like, I got the chicken dinner, motherfuckers. Where's yours? You know, it is totally like a badge of honor. It's totally like one of just the greatest carrots on a stick in video gaming, period. And it's what everyone is it continues to play the game for. So that's why it made this list. Elusive indeed. Yeah, it's that idea of I had to kill 99 other people to get here. I mean, or, you know, like teams that consist of that many. You know, it's like you, it's had, a, you had to outlast yeah, 99 it's a other people. Crazy thing. It's a great uh, combination of like skill and luck. Yes, I have to wonder that. Will I ever get the chicken dinner? But we'll see. Just have to keep trying. Yeah. Poultry is yeah, that great you, anyway. Can you just put me in a game with like 99 noobs, please? Like, that should be like <laughs> yeah, a loot box, right? Green, please, please, please be yeah. easy. But even then, it's just far from guaranteed. Yeah. That's the joy of the game is the random nature of it. And the luck plays a factor for sure, like where the circles are and everything. Our third nominee on the list. Anytime Zelda Breath of the Wild makes you stop and say, wait, you can do that? So I'm confused. So this isn't just one moment. This is like all the moments where you're like, oh, will this possibly work? Oh, fuck. It actually works. That's, right. That's pretty pretty much. Got you. Because I mean, when, yeah. when Zelda came out, I mean, of course, Zelda was like crazy popular and everyone was like throwing up videos of them doing all kinds of crazy shit in the shrines and with, coming up with just insanely like clever ways to solve these puzzles that the game developers they gave you the ability to do, but they had no fucking clue that someone was actually going to solve puzzles in a certain way that people were coming up with. And so, you know, people, it gave like almost a sense of community to the game that was like, hey, look at all this crazy shit that other people were doing. Like, hey, like, hey, I'm going to jump across this this giant ass gap by, you know, jumping up in the air, like hitting this gale of wind and then throwing a bomb and then jumping on it with my shield on, on the bottom of my feet and then fucking making it to the other side. Like, get, like, how? Right. <laughs> like, I, yeah. How do people I remember- come up with this shit? I remember also like just early on in the game, they give you a leaf that like blows wind. And then there was like a raft with a sail on it. I was like, huh, what if I get on this raft? Can I actually steer it with the wind? And I thought in my head, like that would be cool. And then it happened. I was like, oh shit, you can actually do this. You can drive the sailboat like that. Like that was totally like a moment where I was like, wow, this is a Zelda game like no other. It's borrowing from Minecraft. It's borrowing from just some of the Skyrim, you know, just some of the greatest games of, of late and it was eye-opening, and then it just made the mind race, really, like, the possibilities. And almost all the time, I would say, if you can think of something, it actually would work throughout the game. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, the first Zelda game, or really, in my personal experience, the only game where, like, you actually, if you think outside the conventions of a video game, if you think outside the actual box of the video game, it more than likely will work and yeah. it encourages you to, which is great. Yeah, I mean, hey, you want to take this motion control platform and instead of solving the maze that you got to put this ball through, you can just throw the ball up in the air and then catch it on the other flat side and just make it across anyway and make it easy. Like, oh, there man. you go. You I got that. you guys talking about this. It makes me want to get back in this game, but I'm going to have to download the Switch version. Oh, the better version, you mean? Yes, right. clearly. Uh, I just don't want to spend another $80, but I know I'm going to. Oh. It's only 60 man. Uh, let's talk no, about the you got to get the pass. Yeah, you get I pass. haven't gotten the pass yet. I want to get that horse <laughs> cycle. The- <laughs> <laughs> the Epona Mark II. Yeah. Uh, let's skip our fourth nominee real quick here, and let's talk about our fifth, the mm. level in Wolfenstein the two, the New Colossus, where you explore Mesquite, Texas. Now, BJ Blazkowicz has never been the most 
lore rich character in video games you know he's kind of just like fuck nazis and that's kind of all he does um and he fucks nazis he does actually hey now hey hey hi boys boys hello let's not let's not do this (laughs) uh and you know the recent uh machine game machine head games have been kind of giving him a little more character and a lot more like motivation rather than Did just you say machine head yeah machine head games right it's just machine, machine games machine that's head right. is machine a games. bush song yeah that's right <laughs> got a machine, machine head, by head bush machine it's head is a band <laughs> green to yeah, red too. machine okay. head anytime the blue jackets come out on the ice that's what they play it's so lame so machine games really? the devs that's yes an odd choice for entrance music Good you're song, telling but... me they've been doing it for 17 years <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they've been giving this BJ a lot more character and I think it just all kind of comes together in that level in Wolfenstein too, which I guess minor spoilers, right? But you go, like he goes back to his hometown, his home, like his actual home that he grew up in and the suburbs out of, uh, you know, in Texas and there's just so much ambient storytelling. It's literally a gone home moment, but in a Wolfenstein game, like, man, I never thought I'd see the day where Wolfenstein would be about not shooting people, but about picking up notes and exploring different places and going somewhere to press E to trigger a cutscene to see something in BJ's past. And the way that level culminates where you get to meet his dad and it's, there are a lot of emotions going on. And I felt so many things I didn't think I'd ever feel with a Wolfenstein game. And it's probably one of my favorite moments in that game. In a game that, if you heard Jack and my spoiler cast on it, ch- is chock full of great moments. Absolutely. Yeah, I was just going to say, in a game, we didn't give uh, you know spoilers for t- 10 Days of Titus, but we don't have a best narrative category, right? But it this is a game that has one of the greatest stories of the year. And in that game, this is, again, I echo the sentiment that you shared, where this is probably the highlight, right, story-wise, of that entire experience. So... You know, I think this is a strong candidate, and it's making me realize like this is going to actually be kind of a tough category for me. Oh yeah. Uh, nah, man. Listen, listen. The only way it would win is if you could actually smother your gun in sweet mesquite barbecue sauce. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Texas barbecue, baby. Ow. <laughs> take shoot your shotgun. Take a bite out of it. It's all good. <laughs> yep. Uh, and our final nominee here. Uh, 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 I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna mute myself. Uh, and yeah, just, then just mute. throw up. Fine. Throw up the cake heart. The cake pop heart. Oh, you mean uh, this? On the video for me. The, yeah, this, when right? you want yeah, me to we'll, join we'll back. Flip, we'll flip you off when we're ready for you to come back. <laughs> okay, I, yeah, on our on our video feeds here. I'm, uh, I'm gone now. I can't hear you. Bye, Jack. Okay. Man, isn't he the worst? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fuck Jack, guys. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He <laughs> just flipped know, us off. How did he know? I thought you muted him. I thought he muted. He's about okay. to have Mario spoiled for him. Okay. Bastard. So, the end of Super Mario Odyssey. Colin, you want to take us away? Oh, I was going to say we could just spoil Star Wars for him, but okay. <laughs> no, we're not spoiling Star Wars, not for the people who have probably That's maybe true. seen Star Wars by now, but still. Yeah, they're probably more than likely. Um, but no, how fucking great, how fucking great was the end of Mario Odyssey? Better than I expected. It was... Way better. Listen, so like everything from, you know, pose- spoiler alert, possessing Bowser and blowing through all those walls and destroying all that shit and just and then ah oh, getting to the end where you know Bowser and Mario are both trying to give flowers to Peach yeah and that was that was so like comedic beat wise that was amazing but what's even better after all of that we're like hey we're going to take you to the mushroom kingdom nostalgia time bitches and we're just going to you know and just we're going to take you on a our favorite rocket ship and take you on a nostalgia trip, you know, and uh, it was great. Even even to the point where, you know, you could actually play as, nin- you know, Super Mario 64 version of Mario as a costume. Yeah, like and you could go to and shit. Yeah, and you could, there was an, actually a secret room where you could go to the courtyard with all the booze from Super Mario 64. And I was like, Nintendo, Nintendo, stop. Yeah, you- see, part of that for me was kind of ruined because I, I found the one warp painting. I think it was in Bowser's Castle that teleports you to Peach's Castle. And I was like, <gasps> oh, yeah. No, I got the same one, too. Right? So, I, was, so I, I knew that you're going to get to go there, but I had no idea it was going to be like such nostalgia i didn't know if it was one of those things where if it was actually playable or not at the time Mm -hmm. you know i I remember for me like i beat mario like sitting at the bar in my apartment while i had friends over and they were all talking about random shit but i was just sitting there like i gotta be mario i gotta gotta play mario and i remember i had the volume like kind of low because you know it's it's mario you know you kind of get it at some point right there's only so many wahoo you can take right 
but holy shit when they started playing that anime is fuck music i was like everybody shut the fuck up i'm gonna turn this jam up and it's gonna be great you know like when you're playing bowser dude. and clawing through shit oh so good dude it was but. amazing yeah and then well i know it's not quite the end but the fucking uh what was the name of the the world the dark souls looking fucking world where you oh, faced oh yeah the dragon the dragon dude that was so fucking awesome i was like we play mario souls now all right yeah, all right I mean, that's not the end that doesn't count for this but no. Let's let's cut the spoilers so we can get Jack back into our lovely little podcast. Hello, Jack. Earth to Jack. Can you hear us? Can you speak to us? Are you there? Hello. 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 Han Solo Hello. dies again. <laughs> Dang it. I waited all this time. Well, I'm glad to hear that he was at least back alive for a little bit. Yep. <laughs> they needed Harrison Ford again. Yep. All right. I didn't hear any of that. Okay. And so I think that, and thank you. For the hearts, but uh, I think the question now, since we've kind of gone through all the nominees, is, is there a world, is there a plane of existence where the end of Super Mario Galaxy actually wins this category? Because Galaxy. if it's Odyssey. not, I mean, Odyssey, if it's Galaxy's not in the great top, too. if it's not among the top, we should cut it right now so I don't have to mute again. Ooh, that's tough. See, that's um, tough though, because I think it's actually one of the best moments in gaming this year. Honestly, hmm. it's um, an ending to a game. No, I, so Jack, you, you don't. We I can't don't know. explain right. it. Right? You so, you think so, it's one of the best? You think you can win this category? Look, so I know I think I've, you're I've, high. I know I've had a trend of being that guy. that's like, oh, let's cut through the bullshit and just like say the name of the winner or the guy, the per- the thing that I think should win. But honestly, in this particular category, there's nothing that like is a clear cut winner to me. Right? Oh, now. to me, there totally is. Uh, okay, I won't spoil it yet. But to me, there's absolutely like head like a clear winner here. Again, I am at a handicap because I did not do the end of Super Mario yet. I'll get to that right over the holidays, but uh. Hmm. Uh, to me okay so let's keep it for now is what you're saying that's what i'm saying okay so, what yeah. should maybe be cut then i think there's something about exploring mesquite texas as much as i love it oh I my god are you serious don't see that necessarily winning this category what is that yours is that your number one clear-cut winner is that it's in the top half see you think the tech in slow-mo i mean that's a good little oh that's really cool but there's such gravitas dude think about the end of that segment where you actually confront your father i mean who's arguably the true end boss of that game sure but i think oh, wait the tech- should we not spoil colin i just realized yeah kind of did but te- with the tech and slow-mo to me that's such a it's Sorry, what God. makes video games so good. It just kind of like distills what makes fighting games so fun to just boot up when you have friends over. And it makes it brings it to its pure essence of that final hit. It's a right? great moment, you know, and, and I, I think it deserves to be nominated. But I don't see how a slow like a uh, like the Matrix did it first. Right. Like, I don't know how like a slow mo can can be better than the whole of that mesquite level well because it's more than just the slow-mo wow. it's it's the fact that you're playing with your friends and you're in this room with them and there's just that excitement that can like mimic being in a uh, you know ba- like watching a baseball game well baseball is boring watching a football game or something you know what i mean where like you're rooting and it's like oh it's so close to clinching it to the end and it's so tight and it's who's gonna win it's a toss-up like that's a moment that is hard to replicate in video games and tekken does that really well and although Though the Mesquite Texas part is like it's a great moment in storytelling. It's kind of completely unexpected from left field. I think it, it's going to be not only that, but I, I'm looking in the future, like just speculating. Like I don't see how the sequel can top that moment. I agree. That's such a narrative moment. That might be the that could be you know strong candidate for the greatest uh, moment in that trilogy. I don't see how they could possibly top that. So I get what you're saying. I just can't believe that you're we're thinking about cutting that first. And I cannot, I'm beside myself with that. That's crazy to me. Well, then let's talk about something else then. What would you cut first? Actually, no, no, no. Colin, what would you cut first? Um, so I'm kind of at a handicap too, right? It's because I haven't played Wolfenstein 2 and I've played barely much of Tekken. Um, I don't know. I definitely think okay, so let's start here. So I definitely think chicken dinner's up there. Like chicken dinner's up there. Yeah. Uh 
so I don't think we can cut that. Hmm. End of Super Mario Odyssey. I I oh, okay. So I hold oh, on. Do I need a mute? No, I won't. I won't say anything right. spoilery. Um, I would. I I would. Ar- I could argue to put it up there personally because the things that it does, and the way that they 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 do they do up this Mario game, especially the ending. I feel like is almost like a positive commentary on how far we've come in gaming. You know what I mean? Like how far we come as gamers. And it kind of brings game almost like full circle. You know what I mean? It, it kind of brings what Nintendo stands by, what gaming, you know, is the essence of gaming. It kind of brings it full circle for me. Like, I think that, that that's kind of what it symbolizes to me personally. I, anyway, now I wish you guys stressed a little bit more how important it was that I see that. Cause now I feel like ill-equipped. I mean, that, I mean, that's more put, putting. I guess it's almost kind of putting my own agenda on it, but that's what it meant to me. Mm-hmm. And it, so, for that, I feel like I could escalate it to the next level. And but I, at the same time, I also like the sense of community with the whole weight you can do that thing in Breath of the Wild. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, if I had to rank them, if I had to rank those you three, you don't have to. No one's asking you to. Yet. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think I would put. I think I would put Mario Odyssey above what you can do. Wait, you can do that. Personally, so you would you would cut Zelda first? Is what you're saying? <sighs> mm. but don't answer that yet. My thought is that listen, man, Tekken is a great moment, and it's it got on this list. It's nominated. It's an honor to be nominated. But I don't think it. it wins. Yeah, I don't think it wins. I, I think we get yeah, it. Yeah, I don't due. think it's gonna. I don't think slow mo is gonna beat out yeah. Legend of Zelda. It's cool, but I, let's be. Let's I, mean, be I agree here. that it's not going to win, but I also don't think Mesquite's going to win. So you're saying we can cut both of them? <laughs> it's kind of as what someone I'm who pl- as someone who played uh, the what remains of Edith Finch. I think the Mesquite level absolutely holds up with anything in that game. To just mm. like you let you know how I feel about that section. Like I'm I'm kind of shocked that you're so easy to let it go, Robert. I mean, do you think it's easy for me to let it go? Like, I love the narrative in Wolfenstein. So I, I think it's, I just think it should stay. I don't know. I would cut. I think God, we cut you guys Tekken. make it sound like you're killing off one of your children. Right, okay, okay. <laughs> Dude, let's let's, let's great... speed things up a bit. I'm gonna cut slow mo right now. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. Um, I. So you guys, do you both collectively agree that, uh, the end of Super Mario Odyssey, is better than? Breath of the Wild, because I'm on board for Breath of the Wild right at right now. But I would obviously have to cut Mario just because I didn't play it. It's not really fair for me to say that, I guess. Yeah. But. Okay, so we're at Chicken Dinner, mom- Moments in Breath of the Wild, uh, End of Super Mario Odyssey, Exploring Mesquite, Texas, Wolfenstein 2. So, so what out of those four could we cut? My, I have an argument against Chicken Dinner. Oh. You have an <laughs> argument against it? I have wow. an argument against like, Chicken I, Dinner. Like against Holy it, as in you want to cut crap. it. As that I want to cut it because let's okay. let's be honest here. Lost your mind. How many of you guys have gotten a chicken dinner that you were actually very proud of and you've earned it? Multiple. Okay. In groups, never solo. Okay, but how many people can say that? I don't think it's a moment that's easy to share with a lot of people. It's a moment that everyone covets, but only the very few actually get. And I think when I'm looking at these other moments, all of them are attainable. It's very easy to pick up Breath of the Wild for like literally two minutes and say to yourself. Wait, you can do that? And okay. Mario Odyssey, like, you can mainline that game and get to the end in, like, what, four hours or something like that? So it's it's a quick game okay. to get through if you okay. want it to. And with Mesquite, Texas, you literally just play the game. You know, I mean, Wolfenstein is kind of a hard game, but, like, no shame in turning it on easy mode. Whereas with Chicken Dinner, you can play 50, 60, 2 billion hours of PUBG and never yeah. taste that chicken dinner ever. Okay. Can I retort? Sure. Okay, so to me, you're selling this moment more to me, okay? Because let us not forget or understate or and recognize what PUBG is. It is absolutely the most successful PC game of all time. Uh, it is blown up. I mean, on astronomical proportions, the w- the expectations for what was tr- like truly possible with a mod, right? Like an Armor 3 mod or whatever it was, H1Z1. It's being imitated by fucking epic games. The game is so good, and the game design is so good. And 
it's all because millions upon millions upon millions of people every single day are going after this moment. That's how great this moment is. And it's catapulting this game to levels that we've never seen. They're selling un finished copies hard copies on shelves in best buy for this game because everyone is after the chicken dinner no one's in there just to play and then like oh that was fun and leave they're all trying to win everyone's trying their damnedest to win or they're maybe just like trying to be goofy right and try to troll people for like funny moments but that game has more infinite awesome moments than any of these games on this list by its nature of its design and the greatest moment of all moments is arguably the moment where you win the chicken dinner. So I think that the fact that it's so inaccessible, it's so rare, is a reason why it stands up. And it's absolutely, like, to me, like, very, very, very strong in this category. So I, that's my argument, I guess. I'll stop there. Hmm. I can see, I can understand both arguments. But I think for the sake of this list, I'm I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to get behind Robert a little bit more on this one. Are you guys crazy? Jack, I'm actually for, getting angry about this for one. For me, the power I can't of, believe you're going to cut the chicken dinner moment. The power moment. of a moment. Unreal. A power of a moment is that it's shareable and and relatable. Okay. They're always shareable. I was well, just saying, this is the moment you share on social media. Right. But, this is, but then everyone is like, oh, that's cool, but I've never gotten it. I wish I could get it, but I'm not good enough. I've played 20 hours of PUBG, and I still haven't gotten it because I'm not good. But the good. reason you keep playing, the reason everyone is playing is to get this eventually. But it's that's like more of that a stupid play, Player One, uh, what was that? Ready Player One game or whatever? Where what? you're after no, that's the a shitty egg. movie. That's a shitty movie coming yeah, out. Yeah, like, but you, you get what I'm saying, like... This is the Easter egg. This is like the one goal that everyone's driving towards. But to me, and when it, you finally get it, it is the awesomest shit ever. But to me, it spends more of its lifetime being that reward than that moment. Whereas Breath of the Wild, you experience that moment all the time. I don't with, think you'll ever get a feeling in like of satisfaction and of of like victory, and you won't get that endorphin rush with any moment on this list the way you will with Chicken Dinner when you win in PUBG. I don't I I don't think any moment is as high a high. Let's put it that way, as high a high as winning chicken dinner is. And I mean I, I don't deny that, but I, I think I think <sighs> it's it's a little bit more justifiable with Robert's arguments that What do you mean you know, just the because wait, so the argument is because not everyone can do it, it isn't the best moment? That's that's no, it's not that not, not even everyone, a rational argument to me. It's not even that not everyone can do it. It's that not everyone can share and revel in that moment. Whereas if you talk with someone and be like, yo, did you know you could do this in Zelda? And like, you know, that maybe they'll respond in kind or they'll maybe respond like, no, what you can do that? That's so cool. That's a moment that transcends beyond the game and you're sharing a moment with that friend. Or or that stranger at the bar, you know, and the same can be said about the other three, the, but you're not going to find as many people when you're like, hey, have you gotten that chicken dinner yet? That endorphin rush is so good. And the other person's going to be like, this you're going to come off as award, bragging. Though, this isn't the award, though, for most shareable moment or best community moment or whatever. This is the best moment in gaming. The best feeling you can get the highest of the high in 2017 when you're playing a video game. Let's like be clear on that. All right. It's not like what is the most social? What is the most openly ready? What is the most accessible? It's nothing like that. It's what is the best moment. And just think to yourself when you're playing all these, put yourself back to where you were when you were behind the keyboard and mouse or behind the controller. And how did it make you feel? And to me, yeah, I have to omit Odyssey here for myself. But for me, the greatest feeling I've had in 2017 with a video game is winning in PUBG. And I've only done a handful of times, but it's so good that I know I'm going to devote like hundreds more hours to this game, like as the years go by, in search of that again. So what you're saying is you're going to be chasing the dragon. <laughs> I think that's a drug reference. For that main that's what I'm line. Saying. <laughs> that main but, line. But I, it, this is, it's such a great moment. It's driving other companies to chase it as well it's it's transcending just their, their not only their game it's going to bleed in other games you know how many other battle royales are going to happen as a result of this like down the road it's already happening but they're all going towards the same goal being the final one winning the hunger games they're all going towards that that's how great that carrot is it's the greatest carrot on a stick in video games period i can't think of 
an equivalent. There's no equivalent to that in like Overwatch. Okay, Overwatch but, team based. Okay, but here's the thing: you just defined it as a carrot on the stick. A carrot isn't a moment. It's the reward. Yes, it, winning the carrot is the moment. Winning the carrot is the moment. I'm saying it's such a great pool. It's such a strong pool that it has millions of people doing it right now as we're talking. So I don't know. I don't. I I just I just can't see how that could be cut from this. Like they're all great moments, but that's the greatest moment to me. So what you're saying I, is you think this one wins? Yes, I do. I don't know. I I think that there's some merit to the argument that it's more of like a reward than it is an actual moment. Because I mean, you, okay, you Dude. win, and then you're rewarded by being able to gloat about it. Tell like, okay. that to all the people that won a gold medal in the Olympics, dude, that that's not the highlight of their life, you know, for most of them. Like, okay. it, you're saying, oh, well, that's not a moment. That's an award. Well, like, that's true, but you haven't been training since you were four to be good at PUBG. Let's let's not mix apples with oranges. Some people might take years to win it. <laughs> that, but I'm just saying, just because it is an award, that doesn't discredit it that it's not, that it's not a moment. I don't... That's all I'm trying to say with that I mean, argument there. No, and I, I can understand where you're coming from, but I think there's something to be said about these crafted moments, right? Like that are Mesquite, Texas, or that is the end of Mario Odyssey. And then I can kind of see Breath of the Wild in that it's like radiant moments. It's moments where you're exploring so much that there's still so much more to explore in just like how things are done rather than like story, right? I Whereas, can't believe I have to sell this to both of you guys right now. Like I've said my piece about it, like... That's it. Like it's it's the best moment in gaming, like for me. So we'll have to find some kind of compromise because it just seems like you guys aren't really receiving what I'm saying here. All it's right. Like, well, wow. I'm sh I'm literally this is the most shocked I've been over these ten days right here. Like I can't believe that I have to like fight this hard for this. I just hey, there are three more days. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, beside I'm not myself, taking man. away from it, man. Like I enjoy PUBG. I enjoy that chase for sure. I I understand, but I mean. It is what it is. Uh, so, ja Jack, your, it's your wrong pick is what it is. <laughs> Chicken dinner is Jack's pick. What's your pick, Robert? Do you have a, do you have a, an idea in your head? I think it's a toss up between Odyssey and Breath of the Wild for me. The objectively wrong. Mm -hmm. So, would you be comfortable with handing it to Odyssey? <laughs> is, this, is this bargaining now? <laughs> no. Well, because listen, I think personally, I'm leaning more towards Odyssey, and I've I've presented my why argument as to why. Why did you guys not tell me like? hey make sure you play that game because it has what i think is the greatest moment in video games this entire year i'm kind of resenting the fact that you guys didn't like mention I that mean, a little bit more to me so i could have part in this conversation here's, i'm leaning more towards breath of the wild which is why i didn't make a big deal about mm. it to jack <clears throat> you know what hmm. i mean i'm comfortable with giving it to breath of the wild personally <laughs> like i can i can lean either way so if you're good with breath of the wild i'm good with breath of the wild is what i'm getting at God, now this feels like we're just like we're we're just uh, kind of negotiating to make sure Jack doesn't win, and I don't want it to make it sound like that. This but it but it's like not though, like because I agree with what Robert was saying. I understand the argument that Jack like he's coming in with, but I just think that to I me it's an, listen to me it's not about winning this argument. I'm not trying to win the argument. I'm trying to give the best moment of this year in video gaming. I'm trying to award it for that. That's what that's what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm not, I don't care if I win or lose. If I lose, then that's how it is. And that's what this podcast has decided. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to accurately be objective about the best moment in gaming for this year and award it thusly, right? To keep ourselves as credible as humanly possible, in my opinion. See, mm -hmm. the, the way, the reason that Breath of the Wild is kind of pulling at me a bit more is that this is a little bit more outside the box, right? But like, that was the first game I played on the Switch. That's probably the first game everyone who bought a switch back in march and possibly even any time afterwards that's probably the first game they played right so breath of the wild also kind of served as like the tech demo in a way right for what the switch was capable of and that might be influencing why i enjoy those moments so much where i just kind of discovered like you know the leaf can propel a sailboat or like you know, how you can basically walk on water by creating ice blocks and become actual Jesus. You know, it's like, it's something that I tie so closely to like why the Switch to me is my favorite console of the year. So I'll admit that, yeah, that might be like tinging my bias a bit. Whereas with PUBG, <clears throat> to me, it's just kind of any other PC game. Like it's just another PC game that's very good, that's selling very well and does have a good carrot on the stick. But I don't know if I can, if I feel like necessarily that that moment is my favorite thing ever. C consider, I, think we, consider I, know, I was going to say, 
right, um, go ahead. if we were if we were arguing like biggest uh phenomenon of the year or something like that i i think i think PUBG we already, would win, gave, no, no we already gave, didn't we, biggest surprise to PUBG? Yeah, ago? I, I guess so. Because, but, that. but in that argument, I think the argument that I made was because it was such a big phenomenon. But if we were arguing, you know, phenomenons with, in and of themselves, I would give PUBG, like, the win, no question. It, we already did. Which, yeah, basically. So um, consider this. Consider this, okay? After we beat Wolfenstein... I cannot see myself going in and playing whatever the four or five hours would be to experience that moment again. I did it. It was a thing. It happened. I'm glad it happened. Done. I've, I've been there, done that. I don't want to play five more hours to see that part of the game. Also, I don't know. Maybe you guys can just think of it in your head. Would you play the whole of Mario Galaxy again to experience Odyssey. the end again? <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Odyssey again to experience again. Only you know that. Okay. Breath of the Wild. Those things happen all the time throughout. It's emergent gameplay. It's very surprising. It's cool. But as I understand, there's a point in Breath of the Wild where you kind of had your fill and it's almost kind of hard to pick back up again for whatever reason. I'm kind of there already. I feel like I've seen a ton of the game, nowhere near all of it, but it's really a heavy lift for me to get back into that game, knowing that I'm just going to have to re-remember everything. Where was I? Where was I going? How do I do this? What weapons break? What don't, you know, all that shit. So that's a barrier for me to go in and re and experience those that those moments again like even the pull the draw of oh well all this cool shit's gonna happen all these experiments are gonna happen that's not enough for me to get into it okay tech and slow-mo it happens enough where it's like oh that was cool we'll do it again another time but i'm not like hey let's play tekken check out this slow-mo moment i'm not i'm not like that okay however it is very arguable that six months 12 months 18 months 24 months down the road we might still be playing PUBG. And we're going to be trying, and you bet you're asking me trying to win. We're going to be trying to win and play. That's, and that's a moment that we're going to be like trying to, trying to get to again. You don't agree? But that's basic fucking game. It's a <clears throat> multiplayer game. Of course, you're still going to be playing it. You don't well, play. How many games have legs like that is what I'm saying. I'm Overwatch, saying this is a moment. Overwatch, Call of Duty, Halo. This is, this is a, this is a <laughs> moment that we're going to be like trying to get to again. Again, none of the other games are going to like, oh, we need to play Mario. I need to beat it again. Because this ending moment is so great, I, I'm just saying it's it's a different thing. So, yeah, I'm. But you could argue that about pretty much any multiplayer game that's came out this year. None is as good, or none is as widely played. I'm not playing I, Overwatch anymore. It's, it's, it's yeah, in but, this weird space, right, where you can't make the same argument about every multiplayer game. Like, I don't play Call of Duty. Can you name? Can to, you name one moment in one multiplayer game? Okay, that is as good well, as winning no, a PUBG. Yeah, well, name one moment. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm one. saying. It's not comparable to other multiplayer games in that, like, I play Call of Duty so I can get that coveted victory in Team Deathmatch. Like, no one gives a shit. You're going to win a bunch, you're going to lose a bunch. No one gives a shit. So it's not comparable in that way. But in the same way, it is comparable in that it's purely radiant gameplay because no game is the same because it's a multiplayer game. You're dealing with different 99 people every game. So, of course, you're going to keep wanting to play it. Like, Wolfenstein wasn't built to be, you can sit in this world forever. You can play whatever you want. Create your own world. It was. It's not like that. Nor is Odyssey to an extent, nor is Breath of the Wild to an extent. PUBG was inherently built from the ground up so that you'd still be playing on your thousandth hour. <clears throat> so, I don't think that's an argument for, like, why the moment is good. That's, a mo that's an argument for why the game design is good. How right, far and on you? the other side of things, like... You could argue what Jack, Jack, what you're saying about any single player game, pretty much. Like, do I really want to play this many hours to get to back to this certain point again? Like, you, you could say that about any single player. You're game. not saying so. You're not saying that's indicative of how great the moment is, like how much you want to experience it. I think that's indicative of game design. Yeah, I just I don't think I wouldn't say it's wholly unique. So when you go in, so as I understand, Robert, if I remember right, you have to go back to Zelda to beat it, right? I mean, I don't have to, but that would be I mean, the one you, thing. If I you want to beat the game, like you still need to go in and play it, right? I need to spend the five so, minutes to beat Ganon, yeah. So you're going to, are you going to go in and you're going to do a bunch of stuff because it's so awesome and then go beat Ganon or are you just going to go and beat Ganon? I mean, no, but also because I'm not playing Zelda to be like, I wonder what the other links in the game are doing. I can't wait to survive and be the last link on the island. Like, that's not what I play what Zelda you, for. What are you saying? No, I'm not what? saying that at all. You're missing what I'm saying. I'm saying, are you going to go and experience all these great moments again before you go beat Ganon? Are you going to go do this stuff? I mean, that you no, want to award. No, but you're equating the moment to game design. All right, guys. So you guys want to give it to Zelda. 
it's kind of what I'm leaning toward. I think it's a cool moment. I don't think it's the best of the year, but I think hey, it's cool. I mean, hey, I commend you on fighting Jack, but I'm <clears> going to have to give it to Zelda. I, I commend you on standing your you're, ground. You're uh, giving up on Mario? I mean, I, I can, I'm can. i good with either Mario or Zelda winning because I can see the argue, argument for both. I okay, mean, well. I, I think Zelda's moment is stronger than Mario. I won't get into details for Jack, but I do think that Zelda has a lot more... Gonna, for it. I got my saw here. I'm going to cut the bottom third of this trophy off and give it to the right winner. And <laughs> you guys can take the two thirds and give it to wow, Zelda. A little <laughs> sore there, huh? <laughs> I can't get behind this. So, but then, I'm then outvoted. Then do we just not award? No, you have to. And there's three of us, so there can be a majority. So, Okay. It's the wrong side of history, and I'm not standing on it. <laughs> I disagree, but all right. <laughs> See now, I don't feel comfortable giving this award. <laughs> hey man, it's it is what it, it is. What it it is. Just, that's that's the nature of the of the. You know, I'm sure uh, not all panels are unanimous. Yeah, that's true. You know. Well, then the tiny for glassy eyed unblinking nod award goes to the moments in Zelda Breath of the Wild where you say, "Wait, you can do that." Ah, uh, that's been us for the tiny, the 10 days of tiny disc for episode seven. Tune in tomorrow where we talk about the best film of 2017. We'll see Ooh you guys boy. next time. <laughs>